I love that. It's upbeat. It's upbeat. I love it. I love it. Our New Testament reading this morning comes from 1 John 4, 7 through 21, and I invite you again to listen as I read. Dear friends, let us love one another, for love comes from God. Everyone who has been born of God and knows God, whoever does not love does not know God because God is love. This is how God showed his love among us. He sent his one and only son into the world that he might live through him. This is love. Not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. Dear friends, since God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God, but we love one another. God lives in us, and his love is made complete in us. We know that we live in him, and he in us, because he has given us his spirit. And we have seen and testify that the Father has sent his Son to be the Savior of the world. If anyone acknowledges that Jesus is the Son of God, God lives in him and he in God, and so we know and rely on the love God has for us. God is love. Whoever lives in love lives in God and God in him. In this way, love is made complete among us so that we will have confidence on the day of judgment because in this world, we are like him. There is no fear in love, but perfect love drives out fear because fear has to do with punishment. The one who fears is made perfect in love. We love because he first loved us. If anyone says, I love God, yet hates his brother, he is a liar. For anyone who does not love his brother, whom he has seen, cannot love God, whom he has not seen. And he has given us this command, whoever loves God must also love God his brother. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I liked that music that Bob played because it was upbeat. It made you happy. And I like being happy more than sad. And one thing when I was really young and in undergrad that made me happy, ooh, I love. She was light green, so I called her Sweet Pea. Sweet Pea had a rag, mad rag top. She had keystone mags and cut etched glass on her side windows and a mean sound system. Oh, and no boy could drive her. She was a 1964 ragtop Mustang, and I loved her. <laughs> when we thought about love, this sermon, I thought about kind of the week I kind of went through. 
And I wondered how many times was the word love mentioned in the Bible? And the answer is this. It depended upon which translation you may be reading at any given time. For example, the King James Version of the Bible, love is mentioned 310 times. In the New American Standard Version, the word love is mentioned 348 times. In the New International Version, the word love is mentioned 551 times. In the New Standard Version, the word love is mentioned 538 times. And in the New Living Translation Version of the Bible, the word love is mentioned 898 times. And then as I was studying, of course, and preparing, you might see some words in front of the pulpit today. And one of them is called stor storge love. You see, storge love is empathy, a natural instinctual love that we have, that a child might have for their mom or the parent would have for their children. And then there's philia love, affectionate love, but not romantic. That's the love that you share between friends, and you may have an admiration for that person. And then, of course, there's the love that many of us in the movies talk about all the time, and that's Eros love, and that is that romantic love. And then, at the top here, there is agape love. Agape love is the highest form of love that God has for human beings. And it's unconditional. There's no conditions put on that love. When you see our scripture today, John stresses that love is important. And there are different kinds of love down there. And John also speaks to love being rooted in God and God in love. And let us love one another, for love itself is God, and we human beings could not have love if it weren't for God. So John states again, love is not a human achievement. Love is a divine origin. Let me say that again. Love is of divine origin. God's love for us depends not on what we are, certainly not, but what God is. The love that God has was made manifest when God sent his son, Jesus Christ, and God's purpose for sending Jesus is to show us love. Well, I want you to put your thinking caps on. You remember, I think it's called Romper Room. Anybody remember that? <laughs> and you had to put your thinking caps on. And I'm not going to call out your names because I really do know your names. But Romper Room was something in, the, in at least my childhood, and maybe some of yours, where we had to we saw each other. And then at the end of Romper Room, the teacher saw us, you know, in TV land. But I want you to just imagine, when you put your thinking caps on, what this world would feel like without love. Any kind of love. 
Philia, Eros, Storge, Agape, any kind of love. This one is brotherly love. What would it feel like? Something tells me that we wouldn't be here if it weren't for love. We wouldn't be sitting here if it weren't for God loving us so and allowing us to have the free will to try to figure all this stuff out, which we usually spend a lifetime doing. Our scripture here says, there is no fear in love, but perfect love drives out fear because fear has to do with punishment. And whoever loves God must also love his brother. Now, I don't know about all y'all, but I've had four children, and allowing them right now, I can look back and say, oh, gosh, Lord, thank you. They're all alive. They're not on drugs. They're all making their own money. They got their own children. <laughs> And they are a blessing. One in particular kind of put me through the rails, and he was the oldest one. And right now, he's a propulsion engineer for SpaceX. Uh uh. He wasn't always there. <laughs> At one point, when he came back from the Marines, he told me he was a man. You see, there's one more love. There's one more love that's not on here. But it happens to do, and I'll just stick it here for a minute. It's called tough love. Now, my son came home, and he was a man, because didn't he go into the Marines? Didn't he understand that he was a sniper? He knew how to shoot. He knew he was a man. So he thought maybe it was time for him to come home and entertain a certain young ladies and bring them past the two steps that go up to the bedrooms. He realized very quickly that he wasn't raised to bring lady friends up to his bedroom. I don't care how grown you are and how many muscles you have. And so the tough love was that he had to leave the house and find his own house and pay for his own house since he was grown and he was a Marine for the United States of America. But the United States of Mama was not happening. <laughs> now, we talked and sat down and we talked about this thing called respect. And respect is something, yes, we earn as individuals. Respect is something that we have for our brothers, for our children, and certainly for our mate. And respect is something that we have for our God. Because God has certainly given us the air that we are breathing right now under these hot masks. If it weren't for God, we wouldn't have any of this stuff. And so, when we look at and read our word today, and it says, dear friends, since God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. When I sat down with my son, and I did the tough love thing, and said, honey, you've got to respect this house. I didn't raise you to be disrespectful. And if you are grown and you believe that it's okay to be disrespectful, then you must do it out there. And you will find very quickly 
that the world doesn't love you like I love you, you will find very quickly that you will have to find respect for yourself first so you can give respect to others. That is the kind of love that we all have as Christian brothers and sisters. And so, this agape love, the highest form of love, is something that we have not done ourselves, ladies and gentlemen. It says in here, in our own word, it says that God gave it to us unconditionally. Nothing that we have earned, nothing that we can, oh, I'm a, I'm a, a propulsion engineer. <laughs> I can do whatever I want. I can say whatever I want. I can be out in the world and mistreat people. Well, I think he got that. Because you see, like all of us, we've all stepped in some fires. And those fires are what perfect us. Agape love. God allows us to step into some holes to get the heat underneath our seats so we can be perfected in love of God, brotherly love, romantic love, and for our children, and even tough love. Any of you experienced maybe one or two or all of these loves? If you are a parent, raise your hand, or a parent type person, where you have raised somebody or some, something, even if it's a puppy. <laughs> All right. As mentors, as people of God, we all have that responsibility. Every single one of you raised your hand. For there is no fear in love. There is no negativity in love. But sometimes, sometimes, I'll just call it sturdy love. Because it doesn't go anywhere, you still love hard. How many people have loved really hard in their life? Maybe got their heart cracked a couple times, but it mended. Because you're still here, you're still sitting here, right? It mended. It mended because of the Holy Spirit that is in you. That's the Holy Spirit. That is love working in your life. And you could not sit here today had you not gone through a little bit of sturdy love. And certainly, your, your Eros love, none of us be sitting here, right? <laughs> huh? we, have, we have to be born in, in, in love there somewhere. We'd sit here. And Filial love, love for your brother and your sister. And storge love, that's instinctual love that you have maybe for your baby, or some people have it for their two dogs at home. And I pick on Kim, because I work with her all week, and Sometime during that day, she has to tend to her dogs. And in fact, I might say, hey, maybe we can grab a coffee. I don't even drink coffee. I'll just sit there with you, right? You drink coffee. And she'll say, no, I, I can't. I got to go take care of my dogs. She's got to let them out. She's got to make sure they're tended to. That's how God works. We have to tend to our love. And it is not always perfect. That's why the pink one is over there. Because that looks different for every single person here. Not that this doesn't. But tough love 
is something that is hard to do. But we stand resolute in doing the positive thing, the most positive thing that you can do for the whole of everybody. So, with that being said, I read once again, because I don't know about you, but sometimes you're fearful in life, fearful of this or that. And it says, there is no fear in love, but perfect love drives out fear. Now I know that when, when you're an Eros love, of course, those of us that have a few gray hairs, you know, you remember though, don't you? You remember Eros love, and it makes you do some crazy things. You remember? Woo, you ready to jump out the window if she says or he said, right? You ready to just shake and shimmy and everything else with that, right? All right, you act a little crazy. The, the chemistry in your brain changes when, 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 you're, when you're romantically in love. But you see, that matures too, doesn't it? It grows. And they say two become one. And there's a whole lot of people in this room that look like each other. <laughs> Bottom, stand up, you're an example. <laughs> you know, they look, they've been together so long that they look like each other, right? So we're talking about love, right? Rod and Rich, don't even, uh-uh, don't, don't just laugh. Y'all look like each other, too. <laughs> oh, he looks like her? She doesn't have the goatee. Oh, that's right. <laughs> She's got whiskers. <laughs> She's got whiskers on her mask. <laughs> you have a tendency when you're in love, and when you've been, you know what? The swans look like each other, too. Look at y'all. And look at these two. Don't get me started. Uh-uh, Frank, don't even think about it. You start to look like each other because you know what you start to do? If you stay together long enough, you start leaning, rubbing up against each other, and you need each other to get through life because you're leaning on each other. Bailey's. I saw y'all walk into church. Your wife hit the curb and she's like, where you at? <laughs> right? Hit the curb and she's like, wait, wait, wait. And she reached out. And then you all, you caught her hand and you walked into church. You lean on each other. You need each other now. Sometimes we need each other just to walk. Huh? We need each other just a while. And sometimes I was looking at television and there was a woman, her name is Ayana, have y'all, Ayana Vincent? And I don't usually watch, but I just was sitting down and she had a, there was a woman on there, a couple, and they had to, it, admit to themselves that their son was a methamphetamine addict. But they did everything else besides admit that. And finally, when they admitted it, you could see the tears, their heart broke. And then they said, we'll be here for you, but you gotta get some help. And he told them, he wasn't going to go get any help unless he could bring his dog. And I honestly said, no, 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 you don't make the choice here. There is no choice anymore. Those parents had to stand sturdy and make sure that boy got some help. Because if he stayed on the streets, he wouldn't be here. So love looks differently. Sometimes we need to just lean on each other forever. And other times, we have to be 
sturdy and resilient. We love because he first loved us. If anyone says, I love God, but hates everybody else, he's a liar. For anyone who does not love his brother whom he has seen cannot love God whom he has not seen. And he has given us that commandment. Whoever loves God must also love his brother. Brothers and sisters, in this day and time, in 2021, after COVID, after all of the upheaval in the world and here in the United States, let us follow the commandment and just love one another. Amen. 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 Amen.